Hi, today we're going to talk about extensive properties, intensive properties, state functions of a system of interest. Okay, before we talk about these guys, let's define what a system is. A system is simply something that a person or a scientist or a researcher wants to study. It's the object of interest. Okay, and the object could be as simple as the eraser, it could be this marker, it could be this whiteboard, it could be me, it could be the room, the building. This uh, system, for example, if we chose uh, this eraser to be the system, has certain properties. It has a certain weight, it has a certain mass, it has a certain volume, certain density, certain pressure, certain height, length, and width. It has certain properties that um, are used to quantify this system. And these properties, if you list them all in order, could be, uh, could be subdivided into two categories. Extensive properties and intensive properties. Okay? Extensive properties are those properties that depend on size, and intensive properties do not depend on size. So, let's go through the examples. Extensive properties, let's talk about mass. So, this eraser has a certain mass, okay? And what happens to the mass if you double the size of this eraser? Well, the mass would also double. Suppose you add a st or you stack a second eraser on top of this eraser, what will happen to the mass? It will double. How about the force or the weight felt by a scale, right? If you take this eraser and you weight it, you get one uh, force. If you weight this, or if you weigh two erasers, you will get a force twice the size of the original. So force is also dependent on size. Volume as well. Volume is pretty intuitive. If you increase the size of this, so it's twice the, the size, the volume would also increase. Same with area, same with length, uh, width, and height. Right? If you take this eraser, if you stack another eraser on top of it, the height will increase. So the increase in size increases height. How about moles? Well, this is composed of certain uh, bonds, certain atoms that are bonded together, right, covalently. Well, the uh, number of moles, suppose this is, is composed of a certain number of moles, suppose it's X number of moles. You take a second eraser identical to this one, stack it on top of this one, and what will you get? You will get an eraser with X number of moles, a second eraser with X number of moles, the result is 2x number of moles. So increasing this size or this system to twice its size increases the number of moles to twice the number of uh, original moles. The number of moles increases. And remember, internal energy depends on the number of moles of the atom. The atom. So if the number of atoms increases or the number of moles increase, the internal energy also increases okay so all these guys all these properties are properties that could be used to describe the system of interest uh, to quantify it depend on the size of the system increasing the size of this increases these properties how about intensive properties earlier we said intensive properties are those properties that do not depend on the size they're independent so let's see why temperature is independent property. So let's not use this as an example, but let's use something more intuitive. Let's use our human body, okay? So let's take uh, three different individuals. Let's take a baby, let's take myself, and let's take our seven foot uh, player, okay? Seven foot basketball player. We are all different in size, right? The baby is really small. I'm average, and then the height, uh, the height of the basketball player is really big. So there's clearly a difference in size. So we're all going to have different masses, different weights, different volumes, composed of different number of cells or moles, uh, have a different area, have a different uh, length or height, width, have a different internal energy, but our temperature will stay the same. If you check using a thermometer, the baby will have approximately 37 Celsius or 98 Fahrenheit. I will have that same temperature and so will that giant basketball player. So the temperature remains the same. The same way that if we return to this system, that might be less intuitive, 
but still remains true. That the temperature of this, regardless of size, remains the same. How about pressure? Well, pressure from, chem uh, from chemistry or from physics, we know to be force over area. Correct? And the force and the area we saw are both extensive properties. And in fact, it's true that if we take the ratio of two extensive properties, or if, or if we divide an extensive property by a second extensive property, what we get is an insensor property that always holds true. And let's see why. Well, pressure is just a ratio, right? So if we increase this by, say, 2, this increases by 2, and these guys cancel out. So no matter what we increase this by, say, by 3, by 4, by 5, by 6, and so on, this will increase by a similar increment, meaning that you could cancel these guys out and you get the same ratio over and over and over. So pressure always stays the same, no matter of size. Density stays the same for the same reason, because density is mass over volume. It's also a ratio of two extensive properties. And so the result is an intensive property. So let's talk about what state functions are. So state functions are also properties of a system. They're either extensive properties or intensive properties. And they're basically values that do not change uh, regardless of the path taken. Okay? They only, these properties only depend on the current state of the system. Okay? And let's, so let's take this as our example again, the eraser. And let's, let's think about how it was made. So it was made in different factories across the world, right? Suppose factory A is in China, factory B is in California. And suppose that these factories have different methods of creating these erasers, okay? Um, suppose that factory A divides uh, this in half or creates two erasers and then it combines them in some machine, okay? And then suppose that the factory in California uh, uh, takes five different small pieces of the eraser and then combines them at the end, okay? The end result is the same. The end result is an eraser approximately this size, this weight, this, uh, this volume, the same dimensions. The pathway by which, uh, by which it was created differs from factory A and factory B, but the end result is the same. So let's talk about mass and why mass is a state function or a function or a property that does not depend on the pathway taken. It only depends on the system at hand, the current system at hand. So let's take our eraser again, okay? This is our eraser, and let's say our eraser is 500 grams, okay? So that's its mass. Suppose, once again, factory A takes a 250-gram part and a 250-gram part, okay? And suppose that it uses glue, it glues this thing, and it creates this eraser, okay? That's how factory A makes it. What is the end result? The end result is a 500 gram eraser. Now suppose factory B makes the eraser, but it makes it differently. It makes it in sections of 100 grams, okay? So it basically takes five sections of 100 grams each, it glues them together, and it forms our 500 gram eraser, right? The end result is also a 500 gram eraser. So the end result, the, the end mass of the eraser is identical. It's the same. No matter what path taken, no matter how you created the eraser, if you took 100 grams and put them together, and you put 250 grams and put them together, the pathways differ, but the actual, the final result was the same. And that's why mass is a state function because it's independent of the pathway taken to get that final